Hello there. Happy Wednesday. Technically, it's not Wednesday yet, but this instructional video is for Wednesday, October 14th. Our learning objective is I will be able to properly identify and explain the differences between an electromagnet, an electromagnet generator and a motor. All right, so today we are going to be reviewing electromagnets. That's the E, generators, that's the G and M motors in our EGM review. All right. All right, so before we get started, let's talk about a magnetic field. Before we even talk about a magnetic field, what is a magnet? So a magnet it is any material that attracts iron or and any material that contains iron. So in your textbook, this is on page 265, if you want to use this as an additional resource, your textbook is always another um, source of resource that you can use if you have additional questions. If you're not quite understanding something, your textbook is a great um, material to use. So this, it talks about magnets and magnetic field on page 265. But a magnet is any material that attracts or contains iron, okay? So a magnetic in the magnet, there are two ends. There's a north pole and a south pole. Opposites attract. So if I have two magnets in my hand, the north side of one magnet and the south side of another magnet are going to attract. But if I have the north side of one magnet and the north side of another magnet and I'm trying to bring them together, they're going to repel. That means they're kind of not going to, they're pretty much not going to want to be together. They're going to go away from each other. They're going to kind of the magnet isn't gonna allow you to touch, okay? If you ever held a magnet and you tried to put both sides together, it kind of feels like waving. That's that magnetic field, okay? So if I have, oops, sorry here. If I have, I have these two magnets, okay? So when I put them close together, I can feel that magnetic field. I can feel them wanting to come together. That's the magnetic field, all right? So if we look at our GIF, we can see that they're coming together, they're attracting, but I want you to pay attention right here. You can see that, mag you can tell that there's a magnetic field around because that magnet that he had in his hand wasn't directly touching that ball magnet that's on the table, but it's that magnetic field, he's still able to manipulate it, okay? Here in this GIF, we see that there's the North Pole and the South Pole and that um, current is going from North and it's coming right back to South. So it's going from north and coming right back to south. All right, so electricity and magnetism, they're related. They can go one in hand in hand. Hmm, well, let's see. So when an electric current is placed in a magnetic field, electrical energy transforms into mechanical energy. So I know that was kind of a lot. And it was like a lot of big words, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth because there are three different devices that show us how that um, energy is transformed when magnetism and electricity come together. Okay, so remember we talked about these things last week and so this week we're reviewing and we're going to talk more about them. Okay, I'm going to have some different examples for you. So we see magnetism and electricity working together in three different devices. I want you to read those three devices out to me. I can't hear you louder. All right, so we have an electromagnet, a generator, and a motor. So first we are going to look at an electromagnet. So an electromagnet is formed when a wire in an electric circuit is wrapped around an iron core. It turns on and off by turning the current on and off. And the more times you wrap that wire around the nail, the stronger that magnet gets. So we have a picture of an electromagnet right here. This is from your textbook. So we have a nail in the middle, that's that iron core. And we have that wire wrapped around. And so we can see our magnetic field. It is coming off and it's displayed through the arrows, okay? So the more times you wrap that um, wire around, the stronger that magnetic gets. It gets more powerful. Just think of, let's say, if we're lifting weights, the more weights we have on our 
dumbbells. I don't lift weights. Miss Brown don't lift weights, so I don't know what the correct terminology is. But the more weights I have, the stronger I am getting, okay? Let's think of tug of war. If I'm on one side and I have five of y'all on the other side, the more people you add, the stronger it's getting. So the more times you wrap around that nail, the stronger the magnet gets, all right? So that is an electromagnet. Next, we have a generator. So generators produce electric current when a coil of wire, there's that coil of wire wrapped around an iron core is rotated near a magnet. So just like an electromagnet, there was a coil of wire wrapped around an iron core. This is the same thing, except it's rotated near a magnet. It uses motion in a magnetic field to produce a current. So if it's using motion, what kind of energy is it using? Hmm mechanical energy so generators at power plants produce electrical energy for our homes so generators transform mechanical energy into electrical energy okay so we see right here in our picture there is a handle like a crank that we have to crank in order for that electrical energy to start turning so we see the arrows are going from one way. So that means we have to turn it, use that mechanical energy in order for that electrical energy to flow and for it to start going, okay? We can also see it here in this GIF. In order for that light bulb to come on, he had to use mechanical energy and that mechanical energy had to be transformed into electrical energy for that light bulb to come on, okay? All right, so next we are going to be talking about an electric motor. So unlike a generator, where a generator transforms mechanical energy into electrical energy, an electric motor transforms electrical energy into mechanical energy. And an easy way you can remember this is EM equals EM. So if we are looking, I'm going to underline this actually. Well, no, I'm not because my pen's not working. <laughs> but I'm going to underline it using my mouth. So I have EM, this is not a straight line, but it's okay. EM equals EM, electric motor, electrical to mechanical. All right, so we see in this picture in the textbook, there is a power source. So that electrical energy is coming from the power source, that battery, and that power source is being using, providing that electrical energy to be transformed into mechanical energy, okay? So in order for a motor to work, it has to have electrical energy and that electrical energy transforms into mechanical energy and then it forms that electric current, all right? So have you guys, have y'all ever wondered how Beyonce's hair always looks so nice and flawless and flowy in her concerts and videos and stuff? It's okay if you haven't, I have. But the way, reason why is because she uses fans. So fans transform electrical energy into mechanical energy. They have a motor inside them and that motor is using that electrical energy from the circuit that's in the wires and it's trans, once you plug it up, it's being transformed into mechanical energy. But that motor that is also in that fan only works if there is an electrical source, if that electrical source is there to be able to provide, transform that electrical energy to mechanical energy. So we can see in our fan right here, in order for this fan to work, it has to be plugged up. That electrical energy has to be sent from the circuit, from the socket, wherever it's plugged up to the motor, transforming that energy into mechanical energy, okay? All right, so next we have some everyday uses of an electromagnet generator and an electric motor. So everyday uses of an electromagnet are doorbell, headphones, and some people use them or they are used in junkyards as well. So we see in our gift that someone in a junkyard, this crane or whatever, I don't know the technical term is for it, but it has an electromagnet on it. And so it's able to collect and pick up those heavy automobile parts, okay? A generator, remember a generator transforms mechanical energy into electrical energy. And so some fairs and carnivals use them because if you think about it, 
they are picking up and packing up all their rides and their food trucks and everything, and they're taking them across the world. So they have to take their electricity. They have to be able to have that electricity with them wherever they are. So they use generators. So most of the generators that they use nowadays, they're high tech, so they can just plug them in. But some generators also use gas. But farmers and ranchers also use them. And then some people even use them when they go camping. So a lot of times you have to pump it or you have to yank the chain in order for that generator to start, in order for that mechanical energy from you yanking it or pumping it to be transformed into electrical energy. So we see in our GIF, they're pumping, I mean, they're twisting the handle and that mechanical energy is being able to be transformed into radiant energy, electrical energy, okay? So that electrical energy is then transformed into radiant energy. I'm sorry, I said radiant first. But in order for that flashlight to even work in the first place, they have to crank the handle, which is mechanical energy. Next, we have an electric motor. So some everyday uses of an electric motor or electric wheelchair, an AC unit or a vacuum cleaner. So remember an electric motor transforms what? Who remembers? Electrical energy into mechanical energy. It's the opposite of a generator. All right, so we see here in our GIF that they're sitting on the dogs, they're sitting on top of that AC unit, but in order for that AC unit to work, it has to be transforming that electrical energy. It has to be plugged up. It's transforming that electrical energy and allowing it to transform into mechanical energy and for those fans to turn and to rotate and to create that nice, cool, crisp air that we all love inside of our homes, inside of our classrooms, inside of our businesses, okay? So remember an electromagnet has an iron core wires wrapped around it and it creates a magnetic field. A generator transforms mechanical energy into electrical energy. An electric motor transforms electrical energy into mechanical energy. All right, some reminders. The test is on Schoology for you to take. You need to complete it before Thursday by 4 p.m. Any missing assignments that you have for me are all on Schoology and you need to complete them before October 30th. That is a hard deadline, okay? Use your textbook as an additional resource. So like I said earlier in the video, use your textbook if you need more support on this content, on this information, use your textbook. All of the things that I talked about today were in chapter seven. So use that, that is there to help you. All right, and then keep up the good work. You guys continue to amaze me with turning in your assignments, making good grades, calling me and reaching out um, and taking ownership of your learning. So I'm super proud of y'all. Those who have been making up assignments, I'm super proud of y'all. I see the hard work that you were doing. And so keep up the good work. All right, if you have any questions, as always, do not hesitate to reach out, call me, email me, text me, and I'm there, okay? Other than that, I look forward to seeing y'all in class tomorrow. Bye.